Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our morning devotional here at JJ Good Morning. And I trust that all of us are doing well by the grace of God. I understand it was um, made known to us that uh, we have office mates that had been tested positive of COVID. Let us be praying for them. I will pray for them, for their healing and for their recovery and that uh, nothing worse would happen to them. And also let us continue to be careful as um, still you go to work, uh, let us uh, exercise protocol and also be very careful. Let me pray and please join with me now. Our loving and heavenly Father, great are you Lord and you are to be praised, even Lord in these difficult times. In these trying times, Lord God, we can come and uh, commit to the Lord God our lives, our daily lives. Father, I pray for some of our office mates who have been affected by COVID, Lord. They were tested positive. I pray, Lord, restore their health. I pray for your healing hand that might come to touch them during this time. Give them, Lord God, courage and encouragement. Let them not be afraid, O oh God. But, Lord, in due time, Lord, restore them. And when they will be again tested, Lord, let it be negative by that time. Lord, I pray that you will continue to keep the company under your grace and mercy. It's on every one of us, Lord God, from our chairman to the presidents to every employee we have at Uniship, oh God. Take care of them. Every day, Lord, bless them as well and keep them safe. Your heads of protection, Father, I pray that be upon them all. And give them, Lord God, encouragement they needed in times of these difficult times. Thank you, Lord, for this wonderful opportunity that we can again find comfort from your word in our morning devotional. Bless this, Father God, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our... Uh, Scripture passage for today is t taken from the book of John, John chapter 5, and this is from verse 1 to 8, or maybe let me include verse 9. Let me read to you the, the story from the Bible. After these things, there was a feast of the Jews, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now there is in Jerusalem by the sheep gate a pool, which is called in Hebrew Bethesda having five porticos. In this lay a multitude of those who were sick, blind, lame, and withered, waiting for the moving of the waters. For an angel of the Lord went down at certain seasons into the pool and stirred up the water. Whoever then first, after the stirring up of the water, stepped in was made well, well, from whatever disease with which he was afflicted. A man was there who had been ill for 38 years. When Jesus saw him lying there and knew that he had already been a long time in that condition, he said to him, Do you w wish to get well? The sick man answered him, Sir, I have no man to put me into the pool when the water is stirred up. But while I am coming, another steps down before me. Jesus said to him, Get up, pick up your pallet and walk. Immediately the man became well and picked up his pallet and began to walk. This is a beautiful story from the Bible where the Lord Jesus Christ did a miracle, a miracle of healing this uh, paralytic man there at the pool at Bethesda. Our daily bread for today is entitled Hope restored hope restored and uh, <clears throat> this is a very timely topic that we have today for we all needed this hope and may this be an encouragement to us and for us all during these difficult times of pandemic people are becoming fearful we are afraid of the virus. We are afraid to go get sick. We are afraid to be hospitalized. 
and it caused us some anxiety. And to some, it, no, there are people that are becoming hopeless. There are those that have experienced a loss of loved one because of the virus. And uh, others have lost job and opportunities. And to many, it's been difficult and there is the hopelessness. There is the hopelessness in them. But the Bible would keep on giving us encouraging words from the word of Jesus himself. The Bible is teaching us that we are to put our hope in God, that we are to trust God. God who knows our future, God who knows what will happen for us tomorrow. He sees that. So let us put our trust in Him. We do not know how long this pandemic will last. Some experts say it will last up to 2023. We do not know that. But what we know is that there, we have a, a loving God that cares for us. The God that will never leave us nor forsake us. The God that wanting, wanted us to, to put our faith and trust in Him and Him alone. And as we exercise protocol, as we do our part for us to be careful and for us not to get sick, let us put our faith in God as well. He knows what will happen tomorrow. He is a sovereign God. He is an all-knowing God. So let us hope in Him. We thank God that the uh, vaccine is beginning to be available. So that is for our good. So let's, let's as we are to have that at the same time, let us, the more that we have to put our faith in God. Our daily bread had been introduced by the author when he had been asking this question. Simple questions that can be answered by yes. And at times it sounds with sarcasm. Or was it sarcastically asked? He said, does the sun rise in the east? Yes, we know that. Is the sky blue? Sure, we know that. Is the ocean salty? Not small. It is indeed salty. Now the last question, is the atomic weight of cobalt is 58.9? Well, we do not know that. Mm -hmm. That last question might uh, be known only if you are a science um, expert. You made research on that. But some of the questions that have been asked are with an obvious answer, yes. In fact, questions like this are usually mixed with a hint of sarcasm. And if you are not being careful, our, our, our modern ears right now could hear a bit of sarcasm. In the question of Jesus when he asked this man, this invalid man, he said, do you want to get well? Do you want to get well? For sure. The obvious answer would be, Are you kidding me? I've been wanting help for the last 38 years. We read that. The man was paralyzed for 38 years. And because of that long period of time, huh, he really needed to be well. But in the words of Jesus Christ, there is no sarcasm present. And it is the farthest thing from the truth that we can find here. Jesus' voice is always filled with compassion. So when Jesus saw the man lying there, and he asked that question, within him is already the compassion that he wanted the man to get healed. Only for that man to trust the words of Jesus. Only for that man to put his faith in Jesus' words. To have hope in Jesus. And his questions, the question of Jesus Christ is always for the good of the people that he is talking to. It is for our good as the Bible would give us truths about 
God and about what God can do. And if the Word of God, the Bible, is asking us questions, uh, we are to answer that it is also for our good. It is for our good. Jesus knew the man wanted to get well. He wanted to know. Uh, he wanted to get well. And Jesus knew that. He also knew that he had probably been a long time since anyone had made an offer for to care for him. And before this divine miracle, the intent of Jesus was to restore in this person a hope. A hope that had been growing cold. And that is our encouragement today. That is our devotion for today. The Word of God is telling us to restore a hope that we have in Him. Wanting us to restore that hope in Him. Hope in God. Hope in the words of Jesus. Probably our hope have gone, gone cold. There are people that what is left in them is hope. They are becoming hopeless. But what is left is hope. And the question is, what if that one thing that is left in them is gone? What are they going to do? Hmm? What are they going to do? How are they going to face life if hope is also gone? Hmm? But we can put our hope in Jesus, put our faith in God for us to face life. Jesus did this as he asked this question, this obvious question, and giving ways for the man to respond. Because Jesus said, after he asked this question, do you want to get well? Jesus said, get up, pick up your mat, and walk. If you are that paralyzed man, are you going to listen to Jesus? The Word of God is teaching us today, right now, that we need to hear His Word. We need to obey the Word of Jesus. Get up your mat. Get up. Pick up your mat and walk. That is the response of Jesus. And the man responded. The man responded. We heard that. We saw that in verse 9. Why? Because he put his hope in Jesus. He put his trust in Jesus. He believed the words of Jesus Christ. And that get him uh, cured from his paralysis. That get him cured from his paralysis. We are like this invalid man that each of us have something in our lives where hope has withered. There is something in our lives that our hope becomes cold, that we need restoration today. We need to restore that today. Jesus sees us and compassionately invites us to believe in hope again, to believe in Him again. Put your faith in Jesus. Find hope in Him. Find encouragement in His Word. There are two questions that is being asked that, that we can ponder this morning. It says, first, in what ways has your hope have grown cold? In what ways has your hope have grown cold? Is it because the pandemic had been more than a year and you are becoming impatient? You have been asking, when will this stop? You've been troubled in many ways. Problem comes. We got it solved, but more comes. We have some insecurity. We have some anxiety and uh, concerns. And that cause our hope to be withered, to get cold. Another question is, how has Jesus revealed his compassion to you today? And in your life. Thus our morning devotional had helped you mentally, emotionally, physically, much more spiritually. We do this because this is where we can find 
the answer to our hopelessness. It is in the Word of God. It is in the Bible. And we have this morning devotions because we wanted to help you. We wanted to help ourselves find comfort, find encouragement by trusting God and His Word. Let us look. Let me show to you the prayer in our daily bread. He said, Jesus, there are places in my life where hope has grown weak and cold or even dead. You know this. You also know I want to hope again. I truly do. Restore to me the joy of hope, a hope born by trusting you. Let us have that revival. Let us have that restoration of hope that is in God, that is in Jesus. For that will give us strength, that will give us comfort, that will give us encouragement to face life, to face this difficult life we are in right now. That is when we put our faith in Jesus. That is when we walk trusting Him, restoring our hope that is in God, that is in our Lord Jesus Christ. It is not in what we can do. It is not in our strength and ability. It is not in, in your wisdom. It is not in your, your good things in life. It is not in your wealth. You may be having money. No, it's not. It is in God who is the author, who is the provider, who is the giver of everything that we have and that we are enjoying right now. And if we need hope, we need faith, we need trust in Him, let us exercise that. Let us give that unto Him. Let me close in prayer. Our loving Heavenly Father, I pray, restore unto us, Lord God, the hope that is in You. Forgive us, O Lord God, if there were times and moments that we are becoming hopeless. Forgive us, O Lord, of our anxiety. We allow ourselves to be succumb with difficulties and problems and trials and lack of faith and trust and hope. But I pray, Father, today restore that to us. Again, Lord, may this devotional be an encouragement to all of us that we might come to find comfort in you and you alone. Dismiss us now, Father God, with your blessings. In Jesus' name, Lord, I pray. Amen. And amen. Again, good morning. God bless.